you all for joining us. Um, people can join the call as they're able, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so my name is Mia Phillips, and I'm the membership coordinator for NCA CPA. And today, members of NCA CPA's SOAR committee, that's Student Outreach Advancement and Recruitment Committee, uh, will be walking you through NCA CPA's website, um, various members-only programs. They'll answer a few commonly asked questions that you can also find answers to on our student resources page. And we'll end with about 10 to 15 minutes to answer any questions that you all have. Um, and before diving in, I'm gonna have each of the SOAR members introduce themselves. So Taylor B, if you wanna start off. Hey everyone, my name is Taylor Beaupre. Um, I am currently a senior auditor with Cherry Beckert. Uh, I went to NC State for grad school and undergrad, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you all today. Um, my name is Taylor Dill, and honestly, ditto to everything that Taylor Bobre just said. We both work for Cherry Becker, and we're both audit seniors, and I also went to NC State for undergrad and grad school. Hi, I'm Paula Isles. Um, I went to UNCW for undergrad and grad school. I went to, uh, left from there and started at Dixon Hughes Goodman in the public accounting on the audit side, and did that for about three years, and recently switched over about three years ago um, into industry, and so I'm now a financial analyst at a company out in Hillsboro. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Taylor B., if you want to jump in, we can go ahead and get started. Sure. So I'm going to start by... So as you can see here, this is a, the main landing page that you get to when you go to ncacpa.org. So I'm going to kind of like walk you through some um, links here and then we'll go into some of the other uh, separate links. So at the top here, you can see some different links. Um, join will take you to the membership page um, and it'll provide you a list of reasons to join, um, different benefits of joining and also the different types of membership um, that are offered. Today, we're gonna specifically focus on the student membership, um, but this will show you all the ones that are offered through NCAC EPA. The catalog will show you um, a list of different um, learning opportunities that are offered by the NCAC EPA. So this can include things such as conferences, um, webinars, networking opportunities, that sort of thing. Um, Connect will take you to our Connect page, which is an open forum for members or professionals alike to kind of post um, questions related to all sorts of different accounting topics and people can kind of communicate back and forth on that forum. The Career Center is where um, members of different firms, organizations, or companies can post their job opportunity. So it's a great resource if you're in the market for a new job or you're about to come out of school and you're looking for an opportunity or something of that nature. Um, donate is a link to the NCCPA Foundation page. Um, so people will donate to this and this is what creates the foundation scholarships that um, are available to our student members. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the scholarships that are offered um, in detail later on. So now, um, and then just through here is just like some upcoming events that we have um, and just like highlighting different statistics and um, this is the foundation I was talking about, about the scholarships, uh, the career center, that sort of thing. So now I'm gonna take you to the membership page. So this is um, what I was talking about where I said uh, there um, provide some reasons to join the NCA CPA. Um, and this is just the top 10 reasons. There are several other reasons um, to join the NCA CPA. Down here is where the membership types are listed. So there's a CPA membership, an associate membership, and then a student membership. So today we're gonna focus on the student membership. 
Um, so student membership is free for any person currently enrolled in a college or university. Um, you don't have to specifically be an accounting major or know that you want to do accounting. Um, you just have to be enrolled in a college or university, um, especially for people that may not know they want to do accounting, this is a great membership offer because it allows them to be exposed to the opportunities that accounting uh, can offer. And then as you can see, student membership is free for all members. And um, the great thing about the NCA CPA is um, once your student membership is over, which coincides with your graduation or you not being eligible for student membership anymore, there are these other membership opportunities that you have so you can continue to have the benefits that the NCA CPA offers um, and you don't lose those just because you're not a student anymore. Um, so now we're going to go a little bit more into the resources and um, things that the NCA CPA can offer. So we're going to go through these different links right here. So this is um, why be a CPA. Um, I think everyone is kind of familiar with what a CPA is, but if you aren't, it's a certified professional accountant. Um, and it can offer a lot of opportunities and um, experiences when you have that designation. Um, so there are a lot of good reasons to be a CPA. I um, kind of want to just run through some of the top ones. Um, so there's good pay. Um, it is noted that on average, uh, 10 to 15 percent of people with a CPA designation or people with a CPA designation will earn 10 to 15 percent more than those without. Um, it gives you the ability to make an impact. Um, people look up to those with a CPA to be regulators and um, be like the confidant for investors and consumers alike. Um, so you have ability to make an impact on a lot of people. Uh, it offers a lot of job stability and variety. Um, because CPA serves as that confidant, um, there's always going to be a need for those kind of people. Um, because without CPAs, um, there really is a lot of trust that's lost. So um, there's always going to be a need for that. And people always need help in the financial accounting sector. Um, it comes with um, respect and prestige and pride. It's a very hard designation to earn. Um, not only is the exam extremely tough um, and quizzing, but um, just the experience you have to go through in order to get your license is also tough as well. So going through that gives you the ex uh, expertise, knowledge, and skills um, to earn you that respect and pride. Um, it's a really great thing to have, and so a lot of people do wear it with pride, as you should. Um, and then professional independence because of the expertise and knowledge and skills that come with being a CPA, this allows you the professional freedom um, to provide professional services independently. And like, you don't have to rely on other people for a job. You can kind of choose independently on like where and how you work um, just through having a CPA. So that's um, just some reasons of like, why why you would want to become a CPA, what it is, that sort of thing. So next we're going to talk about um, the different sort of career opportunities that are offered um, by having a CPA designation. Um, so this up here talks about um, getting your CPA license. So education, this refers to the credit hour requirement that you are to have um, the exam. Obviously, you must pass the uniform CPA exam. And then in order to get your license, you have to have, have a year of experience. Um, and this also includes internship experience as well. And then down here, list out um, all the different career paths that can be taken with the CPA. And as you can see, there are 
a ton. Um, this is all public. Um, so this would be um, your big four CPA firms that you're like super familiar with, like EY, Deloitte, um, those sort of firms. So this would fall under public. Um, there's a ton of industry opportunities, government opportunities, um, even in the nonprofit sector and education sector. So this just goes back that there's that job stability. There's always an opportunity for a CPA out there. So next we'll talk about applying for the CPA exam. So as I mentioned, you have to have the education exam and experience. Um, so this will um, talk you through before applying for the exam. So you wanna make sure that you're eligible, um, that you have those requirements, those education requirements to sit for the exam. Then you'll submit your application and your fees. Um, you'll then, once you are approved um, through your application, you will schedule it. Um, then you will prepare using um, a um, set of study materials and there are a ton of organizations out there that offer study materials and I believe yes so down here at the bottom these are just a few of organizations that offer CPA exam review materials um, and these show here um, the NCA CPA offers like different free trials um, um, different resources you can have for CPA exam study materials. So once you're done preparing, uh, you will take your exam. You are required to get a minimum of 75 on each section in order to pass. And you must pass all four sections within an 18 month window. Um, and then once you have passed the exam, you will then apply for your license. Next, we will go through the different student resources that the NCA CPA offers. So this is just a snapshot of the different benefits that come with being a student member. And as I mentioned, it's free and you get all of this for a free membership. So that's pretty awesome and it doesn't cost you anything. So why not? Um, I mentioned before, there are scholarships that are offered um, through the NCCPA Foundation donations. Um, there's a career center that I talked briefly about earlier where um, firms and companies and professionals will post job opportunities. So you have that exposure um, that a lot of other people aren't getting just by being a member. There are then mentoring opportunities um, so this is, allows you to establish a mentoring relationship with a professional um, who's going to help you advance your personal goals. And so the mentoring relationship is all up to you and how you want that to be. But it's awesome that you have that ability to have that foot in the door with someone who is in the professional world already. And there are also volunteer opportunities um, available to our student members. Um, we all know that volunteering looks great on a resume and <clears throat> just helps you networking in general as well. And so um, the NCA CPA allows you to be privy to those opportunities and can help boost your resume and um, your networking skills. Um, so this here um, is different like accounting degrees and kind of walks you through what de uh, what degree would be best for your circumstances and if you go to each it um, shows you different degree programs that are offered which are ranked the highest and what um, degree will advance your career the in which way possible um, so this uh, summer leadership conference, that's just one of the events that was offered to our student members. Um, it has passed for this year, but we are planning on doing it again next year. Um, so this year we did a virtual learning opportunity and just like a series of webinars um, covering a variety of topics. Um, it was, I think, really well liked by the students this year. So that's an event that you could come to by being a student member. Um, then also for, uh, as Mia mentioned, we are all part of the SOAR committee. 
Um, so this here explains what SOAR is. Um, and then we also have opportunities for you to be a student liaison. So basically you would work side by side with the student committee, um, the SOAR committee to set up events at your school, um, work with them on like creating events, creating content um, for other students like you. Um, so you serve as a really important role. Um, so if that's something that uh, you're interested in as a student member, definitely feel free to reach out and one of us will be happy to help. And then as I talked about, this is the volunteer opportunities um, that are offered through the NCACPA. Last but certainly not least, we'll talk about the different scholarships that are offered to our student members. Um, so because of the foundation, it provides for three different types of scholarships that are offered. So we have community college, um, undergraduate program and graduate program. And as you can see, um, there are of varying amounts. Um, and so this would be applicable to the type of college that you are currently attending or type of program that you are currently <laughs> enrolled in. And as noted in here, um, it must be a North Carolina community college or a four year program or graduate program. Um, so that's just another awesome benefit and opportunity for you as a student member of the NCACPA. Um, so I know that was super fast, um, but I wanted to give the opportunity to the other members to walk you through some other things. But if anyone has any questions, um, we can take a couple minutes to answer those. Okay, um, Paula, you can take over. Okay, Taylor had briefly touched on the Connect page and some of the member benefits that you have there. So I'm gonna walk you through that in a little bit more detail and show you how to sign up for some of those opportunities. So within the home page, we can cl click on this connect link up at the top right hand corner. It'll take you to our connect page. From there, you can access our open forum that Taylor had mentioned. So if you go under communities and click through to open forum, you'll see different discussion posts um, by memberships, professionals as well as students. And I apologize, I think my internet issues are gonna lag a little bit. So from there, you can search through some of the latest posts. You can click through, comment, reply. You can also post any comments or questions yourself if you want to go under participate, post a message. And from there, you can click it. It'll send out an email notification where others are able to respond to your post as well. And the next thing we'll look at is volunteer 365, which is the volunteer opportunities that Taylor had mentioned. From here, you can click through Get Started. It's got a, a good breakdown of how you can get involved in these opportunities. First thing you'll wanna do is sign up to join the volunteer pool. And from there, you'll get some email notifications based on opportunities um, that maybe apply to your interests that you have noted in your profile. And there's a couple steps for how to get started. So you can go to your profile, put in your interests, things that you might be looking for, and then you can visit the volunteer opportunities page, which will show you any open current opportunities that you can sign up for. You can search through those, click through, sign up. There'll be instructions on each individual one there. Let me click through my volunteer profile. Okay. So in here, you can kind of give some more interest on things that you would be uh, looking for. And so that when you get those email notifications, they'll send out something that applies and lines up with your interest. And then going back here, I'll walk you through our mentoring connection. So with your student membership, you are able to sign up to, to connect with a mentor and to become a mentee. 
And so this page is really easy steps uh, one through five that show you how to get started there. So the first thing you wanna do is complete your profile. From there, you can add your bio, a little bit more information on your background so that when mentors are out there looking for a mentor, they can get, or a mentee, they can get to know you and, and see if your interests line up with theirs. And then you want to enroll as a mentee. And from here, there are certain fields that will ask you a little bit about your background, your technical skills, your industry experience, or what you're looking for, so that when you search for a mentor, you can line up with someone maybe with the same skills as you or same industry that you're looking for. And then once you have enrolled, you can search the directory for a mentor. From here, you are able to enter in a name if you have a specific member that you know you'd like to connect with. Otherwise, you can skip this first part and go down. If there's a specific location um, that you want to stay in, such as Raleigh or, or Wilmington, you can enter that in there. And then there's a couple requirements for um, what you're looking for in a mentor. How many years of experience? what type of technical skills you want, uh, any industry specifications and license. And so typically what we ask is for when you come through here, it's good to, to give some of your you know, requirements if you're very specific in what you're looking for, but try to keep it broad so that you have a bigger pool of, of uh, mentors to choose from and, and that way you, you know, have more options and, and you don't narrow it down too much. So once you enter all of that, you can search for mentors and it'll come up a list. I don't know if this will give me too many. <laughs> so it'll give you a list of all of the members that have signed up to be a mentor. It give you a little bit of background on them. You can also click through their profile to see some more information on them. And when you want to connect with them, you can send them a message, introduce yourself, ask them if they would like to be your mentor, set up a call or a Zoom meeting, and then go from there. All right. I think that covers most of that. Like that was very quick. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions about, about those opportunities? All right, Taylor, I'll pass it on to you then. Okay, so now that we've walked you through kind of our website and um, how you can get there and like the different benefits of becoming a student member, um, we're gonna talk about some common questions that we get. Um, and the first one is always about the CPA exam, uh, which I feel like can be a very confusing process at times. Um, and like Taylor B mentioned before, we do have, um, a walk, like walks you through how to like set up everything and apply for the exam on the, um, actual website itself. But basically, so it's going to take a few weeks to get through your application because they have to run a background check and stuff on you. Um, but you apply through the North Carolina state board and there's an application online um, and you'll want to select whichever um, sections you would like to take at that time within a six month period. So you get six months to take your exam whenever you apply. And so typically people apply for like two exams at a time. Um, I would not suggest signing up for <laughs> Um, all four within six months because <laughs> then you have to take all all four parts within six months um, and so it requires things like you might have to get um, a professor or um, some colleagues to sign that you are ethical um, and then you have to complete the application um, and then your fees are going to be pretty high at first. I think there's like an initial upfront fee of like $250 and then each section, I can't remember how much, it's like almost $200 per section to take each section. 
Um, so then you submit that and all of, so your application and your, your payment to the board, and then the board will process your application, run a background check. Uh, so this can take several weeks. Um, so basically whenever you are, I wouldn't do it until you're, you know, for sure that you know, I need to take the exam now because otherwise you, you only have six months after that um, to prepare um, for whatever sections you have scheduled or whichever sections you want to take. So then after the board processes your application, they'll give you a notice to sit, which is an NTS. And then um, you go to Prometric, which is the um, testing center that they use. And then through Prometric, you can sign up to take your test and schedule your exams. But I will say that every third month is a blackout month. So that means that you can only take the exam 10 days out of that month. So there are two months that the, like you can schedule whenever. And then for that third month of the quarter, it's only, you can only take it for 10 days out of that month. Um, so I'm not entirely, I think they've changed a few of the rules since I've taken the exam, but it used to be where you could only take a certain section once in that three month quarter, that three month window. So for example, if you take FAR and you don't pass FAR, you, could, you had to wait until the next testing window in order to take it. But I think they might have changed those rules since I've taken it, um, but I'm not entirely sure on that. And then, um, so I would say, I'm a, I'm, I study a lot. So I think I studied for like a month or two prior to each exam, um, just to kind of give you an idea I started studying as soon as I submitted my application um, for my first section. And then as soon as I took that exam, I started studying for the next one. Um, they are like giving you your test scores a lot sooner than they gave us ours. I know when me and Taylor were going through it, we, they wouldn't give us our scores until the end of the quarter. And so sometimes I was getting back like two exam scores at the same time and it was kind of nerve wracking, but I think now they're doing it on a rolling basis. Um, so you should have your exam score back within like two to three weeks probably for each one. But um, yeah, so I signed up for two sections each quarter and luckily I passed all four parts on the first try. So. I was able to finish within 12 months, but you do have 18 months to pass all four. And it only starts, your 18 month window starts whenever you pass your first one. So, and it's the date that you took the test, not the date that you receive your scores. Um, yeah, so I know some people who prepared for a week or two before the exam and passed it, but I am not that person. <laughs> Um, I definitely studied for like a month or two prior to each exam. So um, yeah, it will, it will definitely take you. So I think I took a test per quarter basically. Um, but your notice to sit will last for six months to schedule. All right. And Taylor, does anyone have any questions specific to the CPA exam? Um, what to expect, timing, preparation. So another hot topic we kind of wanted to touch on was um, the difference between audit, tax, advisory, um, and how to kind of navigate choosing that. Um, I will say up front that um, firms um, or companies alike kind of want you to have an idea of what you want to do prior to coming to work for them. Um, a lot of times people will say, oh, I'm, I'm up to do anything, but they kind of want you to have a decision already made. Um, 
there aren't really a lot of firms that offer the opportunity to have exposure to audit tax and advisory, like a rotation sort of program. Um, so they do want you to have that in mind. Um, so it's good to kind of have that idea prior to going into it, which is why a lot of times people will ask about it. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm an audit. Um, and so basically, I guess to kind of break it down into like non-professional qualities. So I would say audit is more of like team orientation. Um, it's a lot of group work. Um, you're constantly working on a team with other people. You're very client facing, um, obviously not right now, but um, you'll be out at client site a lot of times um, working with your clients uh, face to face. Um, there's a lot of, I would say, variety in your work, at least for me. I know I personally have a lot of variety in my work and I can work on a number of different types of engagements and a number of different clients just within one day, um, just depending on the day and what I have to work on. So I'd say there's a lot of variety in audit. Um, and then tax, I would say is a more individual kind of work approach. Um, not that you don't work with other people, but you'll typically be performing a task or be completing a return on your own. Um, so if you're not one that really cares for the teamwork, um, I mean, no judgment. I know a lot of people that don't and that's fine. Um, and then tax, um, don't do a lot of client site work, I would say. At least I know my firm, Cherry Becker, they're typically in the office most of the time. And if they have to work with a client, like the client will just bring stuff by the office. Um, they're not really out at client sites um, doing that. Advisory, I would say um, if you wanted to look at between team versus individual, I'd say it's more of a team orientation. Um, and there's a lot of client facing work with advisory um, because you're working with clients on your risk management, um, your IT applications and that sort of thing. So they kind of have to be on site to work with those things. Um, and a lot of times advisory can be called consulting as well. So if you think about consulting, you're really like working hand in hand with your client a lot of times. Um, so that has more, I would say, client facing work than audit would. Um, I'm trying to think of like different myths, myths that people have about one or the other. Um, I think it's really just based on your work style and how you work better. I work better in um, your typical audit environment and that's kind of the environment that I thrive in. And if that's not for you, then maybe audit isn't um, the route that you should choose. Um, but I think taking your introduction to audit and introduction to tax can kind of give you an idea of, okay, I like one versus the other. Um, I knew from the get go that I was horrible at tax and it was just a concept that I didn't understand. So it was very clear to me from the start um, that I was more of an audit person, I would say. Um, but I'd say each um, different service line has its own um, characteristics to it and it would follow more to like your work style and what works best for you. Um, so, and then you may not, you may find like, oh, I'm good at tax and I'm good at audit too, but I'm more of an individual person or I like working with people a lot. So you decide to go to advisory. So it's really just based on personal preference and how you work best. Does anybody have any questions about those three service lines? Okay, Paula, I'll hand it off to you. All right. One of the other topics that we have on here to discuss is public accounting versus industry. Um, and so I, I think every now and then we'll get questions 
um, if it's important to graduate and immediately go into public accounting or if it makes more sense for you to maybe join industry and, and join an accounting team um, rather than spending time in public accounting. I think it's definitely a personal preference. I, I did take the public accounting route. I did that for two and a half years and quickly realized I did not want to stay in public accounting for my career. Um, and so I was given an opportunity to take a job in industry and work in, on an fp &A team. And so I have seen both worlds and there's a couple things that are different, but of course it's a case by case firm by, uh, no firm is the exact same, no company is the exact same. And so it definitely depends on you know, your company that you're looking at or the firm that you're looking at. But I think there are some probably key differences in the two. I think with public accounting, you definitely get a lot of interaction with a lot of different people, which Taylor mentioned. And if that's, you know, if that's you and how you work and, and what you like to be in as far as your work environment, then that's probably a route that you might would want to go. Whereas an industry you're working with probably a smaller group of an, a small accounting team and you're every day going into the same office and looking at the same people and there's not a whole lot of variety there. Um, the, the travel is probably another key difference depending on the firm and, and industry that you go into public accounting and the type of clients you work on. You might have a lot of travel with that. It might be local. You might have to you know, fly in different states. And so if that's something that interests you, then you probably do want to go into public accounting. But if you're more of a homebody and kind of want to stay in one spot, then industry is probably a, your better route. Um, typically in industry, you go to the office and stay there. There might be some cases where you might do some training and travel a little bit. Um, but most cases, you'll probably, you know, have the same routine every day. Um, another probably big difference is the hours. Um, definitely depends on, you know, the firm that you go to. And it definitely depends on the company that you work at. There are definitely, you know, companies that are in industries where they do work 55 hours and there are definitely firms where you only have to work 40 hours. It definitely depends on your situation, but I think that's a, a definitely a, a key difference. And if you're not looking for that long hours, especially during certain times of the year, then you might want to consider going straight into industry and having a little bit more of an eight to five uh, work day so that you can come in get your stuff done and leave at five o'clock. There are definitely times in industry where you're doing month and close that you might have to work a little bit later, but for the most part, you could probably work 40 hour weeks and, and go home and be fine and leave and, leave and work at, at work. Um, so I think those are probably the, the main differences there. I think some other things, at least in my experience, I think with, with public accounting, you get a lot of um, connections and networking opportunities that you don't get if you go into industry. I think if you if you do go into industry, then it's important to join, you know, the NCA CPA and get those connections elsewhere. Um, you can join local networking, you know, organizations and communities so that you can interact with others. But I, th I think that going into public accounting, at least in my experience, and I'm sure both tailors have the same experience, um, you meet a lot of different people, you have a lot of different clients. And so you'll you'll have those connections forever. And if you make good relationships with those people, um, you will have good opportunities come up, job opportunities come up. Someone might come to you like they did to me and, and offer you a job to leave public accounting and that might be the perfect time for you to leave. Um, so I definitely think that going that route for me at least um, and what I was looking for was very beneficial and I've taken a lot from that that I can use in industry. But, um, but you definitely have endless possibilities and Using the NCA CPA website, you know, Taylor went through a couple of the career opportunities you have. So definitely consider all of your options and what, what works best for you. I think that's really all that I have if anyone has any questions. All right, Taylor. <laughs> So the last um, big hot topic that we wanted to discuss was just, you know, if you do decide to go to the public route, should you go to big four, should you, should you go to a regional firm, or she, should you go for like a local four firm? And so I will say I have never worked for a big four, um, but I do have several friends who have worked for a big four firm. Um, I have worked for a regional firm. I currently work for a regional firm, Cherry Becker, and I also worked for a local firm here in Raleigh um, as an intern. Um, I will, I don't want to like 
So for big, it's just like based on your preference, right? So big four, you're probably going to work longer hours during busy season, um, but your busy season might be shorter than if you work at a regional firm. But at the same time at a big four firm, you might be working on like one to two big clients um, during the year, get a lot of variety. Um, like it's not, that's probably not everyone's experience, but I know a lot of my friends only work for one to two big clients during the year, and then that's all that they do. Um, I also know some friends who maybe they only touch one or two sections um, in the binder. So like maybe they would be doing cash or like accounts payable or something like that um, for their first year or two um, and really don't get the experience with the rest of it. Um, with the rest of the audit or like, for example, like taxes, they might be doing like really simplistic returns at first. As far as big, I would say there's probably more like benefits such as like health insurance and like stuff like that. Like I know EY, I think they offer a lot of things in terms of like gym memberships and like a lot of those kind of benefits, um, or as a regional and a local firm probably won't. Um, but when you progress, you're probably also going to make more money because you're working longer hours, um, the higher that you go. Um, there's probably more turnover at big four firms just because of those long hours. Um, but again, that's not every single big four for farm and like that won't be necessarily what your experience would be. Again, it just like depends. Um, you're probably going to have to travel more for big four. I know a lot of my friends who work for a big four firm, they're at the client site every day, including Saturdays. So it's just depending on when, like what your preference is. Um, so at Cherry Becker, I will say that we're doing more of a remote auditing thing. So if you're a homebody, that might be a better option. I am a homebody. I do not like to travel. Um, I have traveled to like Wilmington, but we don't really do a lot of traveling unless it's for like training or something of that nature. Um, like we flew out to Orlando last year for our, our big firm wide training. Um, but again, like I have not had to travel much. I will say our risk advisory team, they travel a lot. And it's just because they have to be on client sites. Um, and I will say probably risk advisory at any firm will probably be traveling a lot. Um, and that includes going to different states and stuff like that. Um, regional, I would say they have more local clients. So I know, um, for example, our Raleigh office really only services like the Triangle area. Um, there have only been a few times I've had to travel to Wilmington for work. Uh, we do have a few clients out there, but, and I think we might have one in South Carolina, but typically we don't really service clients that are outside of um, yeah, like our area. And regional firms probably have more than one busy season. Um, like for example, we have a lot of governments and nonprofit clients, um, which a lot of the big four firms will don't really wanna deal with. Um, so that is typically in the fall, but it's not, like 55 plus hours a week. Um, I think our, our requirement for the fall is 45 hours, um, which again is more than your 40 hour that you would be working probably at industry. Um, but we do have like the double busy season. Um, and I'll say that in, but in the spring, so we call it spring, but it's really like January to March um, we will probably have less hours to be worked than a big four. So I think we work 55 hours, 55 to 60 hours. And at a big four, you might see like 
60 plus, 70. I've heard friends say that they work 80 hours um, a week sometimes. Um, local firms, so they are probably only going to have one busy season, but it'll only be in the fall because they don't really want the SEC clients. They're not big enough to service them. Um, so you're like public clients. They have a lot of different regulations around them. So a lot of local firms won't service them. So they'll have a lot of governments and nonprofits, which again are in your fall um, time frame. I will say there's a lot of benefits to working for all three types. Um, it just really depends on do you want to um, work for one or two different clients and or do you want to work for like a variety of clients like me and Taylor do. Taylor and I both have really had experience in all sorts of clients. I mean, I have worked on nonprofits, governments, commercial, financial institutions. Um, I think the only thing that I haven't worked on at this point is a public client. And that's just because we have a special team that works on those because they are just so like standardized and there's a lot of that goes into them. Um, so again, it really just depends on what you're looking for, like if there's a different, if there's a certain industry that maybe you're interested in, maybe you can like look into that more um, to see if um, the firms are doing that industry. Um, either way, you're getting the same, I feel like you're getting a very similar experience um, in terms of your knowledge that you're going to gain it's just a matter of how you get there. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? No? Okay. So I think now we're just gonna open it up to your questions if you, oh. That looks like we have one question. Yeah. Do I need to pay again if I didn't pass? Yeah, so <laughs> if you don't pass your exam um you have to reapply for the exam and i think um so the first there's an application fee and then there's a separate fee for each exam and the second round of application fee is a lot less than um the first round but i still think it's like 75 dollars but yes you have to pay every time you take an exam any other questions? If you guys want to put um, any questions you might have um, in the chat, you can do that as well. Um, if you don't want to speak up, you can put it in the chat. Um, so Jessica had a question about advice on getting internships. Um, I would say, um, so a lot of, so how I, I did it was I went to a summer leadership conference with Cherry Becker and got an internship offer from that. Um, and majority of public accounting firms have what is called a summer leadership conference and that is a really great way to get your foot in the door and you're pretty much guaranteed an internship out of that unless you like royally screw up at the conference um, which is like really hard to do um, so I would say um, start applying for summer leadership conferences and those will all be posted on um, the firm's websites um, I would say start looking, they're typically held, I would say, early May to like mid-July time frame. Um, uh, so I would start looking for those in like January because um, um, firms will start putting out opportunities for the summer leadership conferences um, as early as like the end of the year prior to or um, early that same year. So I would just start visiting websites to look for that. Um, so that's probably the easiest 
way to get an internship. Um, I'd say the next easiest way is like networking. Honestly, I know that's kind of hard as a student sometimes um, to network, but just like involving yourself in different organizations, um, talking to professors. A lot of professors have connections at all sorts of um, companies and firms um, and can help you with those resources. Um, so I'd say networking is your next best opportunity. And then last, um, I would say just going to different firms' websites and seeing what internship opportunities are posted. Um, I know also to a lot of schools um, will have like an employee career resource page um, where firms and companies will post their internship opportunities and it's kind of like exclusive to that specific school. It's like, okay, the firm's looking for students from NC State, for example. Um, so that's a really good resource too if your school offers that. Taylor, yeah. I also wanted to, um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to oh, also I was just mention. Gonna yeah, go ahead, Mia. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say that um, Mentor Match is also a great place to network. I know that that was touched on before, but especially whenever things are all virtual right now and there's not as many in-person networking opportunities, um, this isn't a guarantee with any network or mentoring relationship, but we have had um, a handful of individuals find jobs and internships through just connecting with these professionals and finding like you know, who they work for and what opportunities are available there or someone that they know who um, has, the company has just posted an internship. So Mentor Match can also be a great resource, especially right now, whenever there are a few virtual uh, in-person opportunities. And you can go ahead, Taylor. Um, I was just gonna add, um, you want to kind of be aware of when companies um, recruit. So like for public accounting, we recruit in the fall. So starting in like September, you can like start seeing some of our applications online. But I know that more like industry finance roles probably are more spring when you ha would have like your career fairs and stuff at your school. Um, so just keep that in mind, like what you're looking for. All right. Um, and then Harry had a question, how necessary is a MAC um, if you have your CPA in regards to future work? Um, it kind of depends. <laughs> I know that's like um, a kind of a iffy answer, but um, it really depends. Like for example, risk advisory, we don't require you to have a CPA license, so we don't require you to have a MAC. Um, I know that my roommate's firm actually requires them to have a graduate degree, um, even though you don't have to have a graduate degree to get your 150 hours of education. Um, so it really just depends on the company that you go work for. I will say I feel like I gained a lot of valuable knowledge in the MAC and I feel like it helped me with the CPA exam but if you already have your 150 hours I would say don't waste your money <laughs> or don't spend your money so I don't know. I would I would second that um, I think if unless it's required to you so the reason I ask I graduate so I'm not sure what to do um, so for the 10 extra credits, honestly, I would recommend going to a community college um, and getting those uh, last accounting credits. Um, yes, the MAC program was phenomenal and it like gave me a lot of great experience and I think really helped prepare me for the exam and for working in the professional world. But if I already had my CPA exam or I only needed the 10 extra credits like you do, Harry, um, I would definitely save my money and just go to community college to get those extra credits. Because um, even through that, you're still going to get um, that added benefit of extra knowledge by taking those courses. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend the community college route. 